So hello fellow Earthlings, this is Earthlings 6455463728. And Joe Rogan is super wrong about his idea that the government should simply be encouraging people to strengthen their immune systems in a variety of ways and then just open back up the country because COVID-19 is not as serious as they thought it was going to be. Now, before, let's just jump into it. Number one, COVID-19 is not as bad as we think that it is, says Joe Rogan, and um, that's not exactly correct. For one thing, China doesn't seem to think that they can just open back up their country and everything will be all right if people just use herbal medicine, uh, Chinese herbal medicine, and strengthen their immune systems. As a matter of fact, uh, nowhere in the world is anybody encouraging people to just strengthen their immune system. I know that Joe Rogan does a lot of things to try to help his body to sustain, um, be able to, to withstand any problems. For example, he goes to a sauna and he has these uh, heat shock protein treatments that he gets as a result of that, where, you know, people, they go into the uh, hot room, a sauna, and then they come back out and take a dip, let's say, in cold water. And then you do that a couple of times. I have a friend of mine uh, from Macedonia who says that that works, that it helps. You know, the Russians do it too. Russia seems to be having a bad time with COVID-19. So I guess that isn't working out for them. Um, in China itself, the place, the where this thing started, they don't seem to be just thinking, okay, well, we can we can just use some herbal medicine. No. Wuhan was shut down for 76 days, I believe it was. And there's, you know, another outbreak starting out again. And I think they've shut them down again. In Korea, um, they had a, a small outbreak as a result of uh, some bars. So they shut down all the bars indefinitely because they say people weren't wearing masks and stuff in there. Uh, Singapore had another outbreak when they decided to loosen restrictions on the country. So they tightened them back up again. All of these countries seem to be doing well. And as soon as things started to flare up, they shut the country back down again or the particular area where these things were happening. And nowhere is anybody just encouraging people to sleep better, eat better, use uh, saunas. That's absent. So, number one, you know, and these places use masks. You know, Asia is the mask capital of the world uh, you, you've never seen um, people with videos that come out of Wuhan I'm sure you would never have seen people not wearing masks so if masks really worked then why did the government over there bother to shut down you know Singapore or Taiwan or declare a state of emergency in Japan, or shut down the bars in, in Korea, or shut down Wuhan again. That nobody's agreeing with Joe Rogan that these are these simple things that you have to do. And the idea that, you know, this really isn't that serious. Um, Joe Rogan, when things were at their peak, in Italy and Spain. People would have looked at you like a crazy person if you'd been 
been insisting or continuing to insist that things aren't that bad. They weren't going to get that bad. How e this, these things in Italy and Spain and soon to develop in Brazil, um, they were, it's barely been, what, a month or six weeks ago that things were at their peak and everybody was scared that the same thing would happen in the United States or wherever else. And yet that short amount of time is all that it took for people and you to forget everything that was happening in Italy and Spain. People look to a place like, uh, and right now, as a matter of fact, things are not very good in the UK. They're certainly not that good in France. And they're just getting worse in Brazil, where Bolsonaro, that crazy, crazy guy who's so much like Trump, things are just going to get really bad in Italy because he's totally disregarded, uh, not Italy, sorry, Brazil, because he's totally disregarding, you know, all of these things that are being recommended. Even, I think, the health minister over there, he resigned. So the idea that it's not that bad, I remember reading or hearing a, a quote that when things go bad in terms of a pandemic, if you do what you're supposed to, a lot of times it looks like if you overreacted. That was one of the first things that I heard, that when you do what you're supposed to do, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between a serious outbreak or what could have been a serious outbreak and an overreaction. And I think that's part of the reason why Joe Rogan is confused. We can see how bad things could have gotten or tending to get in Italy. We can see how things are in the UK when they disregarded the idea and they just thought, hey, this might just might be a flu. We can see how things are going to get in Brazil. Brazil has one of the highest daily death numbers in the world, aside from uh, U.S. right now. And the idea is that, okay, people look at Germany and they say, hey, look at what's happening in Germany. Germany is doing a good job. Look at what's happening in the Scandinavian countries. They're doing a good job. Look at Sweden. And I know there's going to be differences between Germany and Sweden and uh, even the UK. One of the things that Joe Rogan points out is that, oh, you know, over in, the, uh, in Italy, they smoke so much. And yeah, over in Italy as well, they have these intergenerational families where it's really easy for young people to give the disease to the older people. The thing about it is that in Sweden, as far as I hear, there are a lot of single living arrangements where people, a lot of people live by themselves. It's not to say that they haven't been hit. They have been hit. Um, they, once you go down a, a path, it's hard to just come back and say, eh, well, we didn't really, you know, that didn't really work out. Let, let's try something else. And in a way, that's where they are. They didn't close down their country, but they have a lot of, of, of deaths anyway. But I think it's a little bit ridiculous of Joe to simply assume that the U.S. as a whole is going to be like Germany. The U.S. is a whole bunch of different countries, in a way. Uh, and by many different markers, a lot of regions are very, very different. And... Yeah, California might is a spread out state. So a lot of people aren't using uh, transportation, I mean mass transportation. So it's going to be a little bit different from New York where everybody uses mass transit. The thing about it though, 
just like in Sweden and in many other places, is that, yeah, you, it's a little bit different. There's not as much mass transit. But people congregate at their destinations, wherever those might be. They congregate at concerts, if you open back up concerts. They congregate at restaurants, if you open back up restaurants. They congregate in the food court, at a mall. Wherever it is that you open back up and people start congregating, they're going to. And the longer they sit next to someone who has an infection, regardless of, of if they got there by mass transit or not, the longer, the more the increased likelihood that they're going to catch a COVID-19 from someone. There are a lot of states that have opened back up even though their rate of infection has not gone down. I think there are four markers that the, that John, I think it's John Hopkins used to recommend whether or not a state should open back up. And I think according to someone who spoke to Congress in the U.S., that not one single state has fulfilled all of those markers that John Hopkins uses as criteria to decide whether or not a state should open back up or not. As in, you should have appropriate testing, you should have enough um, beds to handle whatever happens. There should be two weeks of, at least two weeks, of falling infection rates and so on. I think there's another one I can't remember. Yeah, there is another one. And it's interesting. You know, Joe Rogan will be like, well, you know, if Texas and these other places that opened up in spite of the disease, uh, if they are okay, then everybody's going to be, oh, you know, you guys were scared for no reason. Well, for one thing, I think Texas and these states that have opened back up, they have forgotten Italy. They have forgotten Italy, and they think that they're like Germany or like Sweden. And as a matter of fact, I think their numbers of infections are increasing as we speak. It's going to take a little while to see the effect of it because it takes a while for the symptoms of infection to occur. But I think that we're going to see what's happening. Matter of fact, um, my sister would have sent me um, someone a discussion on that someone was having where she was saying that aside from New York, if you take New York out of the picture, the U.S.'s numbers are actually increasing. It's just because of the, the huge effect that New York has on, on the U.S.'s numbers. One thing that I think that Joe really putting, is putting his faith in is these antibody tests, one of which that he uses himself for his guests, whereby he actually thinks that the corona uh, pandemic is very, very widely spread, that all of these people have it and they're not showing any symptoms and, you know, it's in many instances, I think in his head, he thinks it's, it's already over. That so many people already have it, that it's already over. And there was an article, I think, in the Washington Journal, I think it was, where um, a group ran their tests, ran a number of tests on 50 antibody kits, I believe it was, in order to see how effective they were. And I think out of the 50, only three tests p performed well, as in to say that they actually gave positives when they were, uh, the person or the sample had been infected, and they gave negatives when the person or the sample had not been uh, exposed to COVID-19. So Joe believing 
this information, the idea that all these people have already been infected and it's not, not really a problem anymore, I think it's based on false information. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it is. And, you know, I like Drew Rogan. I like... Um, I've, I've been just been a, a side viewer of these GRE clips that you see every once in a while. And then of late, I decided, okay, I'll take in uh, most or a lot of an entire episode. And um, I was thinking to myself, when Joe realizes that he's wrong, I hope he can come back and say that he's wrong. And, and based on what I'm seeing, though, it doesn't really seem to be the case. For one thing, hydroxychloroquine. Um... He used to, to talk about it a lot. And I haven't heard him mention it at all. Um, I remember, and that's probably because he's heard that it doesn't do anything. You know, even when Michael Yo came on, he was saying that he got it and it didn't help him um, in, in his short space of time that he had it. And furthermore, um, he, his body couldn't handle it. So they had to take him off it off of it after a day. And I haven't heard Joe Rogan say something like, yeah, you know, hydroxychloroquine doesn't work anymore. As a matter of fact, when uh, uh, Michael Yo was saying this, remdesivir, it, it doesn't work. He's like, where did you hear that? It's like, well, that's what the doctors told me, you know. He could have asked Jamie to pull it up. He could have asked Jamie to pull up the details of that. He didn't. So... And the idea, I forgot this one, the idea that it's just an idea, uh, just a, a matter of strengthening your immune system and then you'll be fine. Yes, that, that might help a small little bit. And the reason why I say it might help a small little bit is because all the Native Americans were probably pretty healthy people when the uh, colonists came came to the new world and yet most of them died right so their healthy lifestyle didn't help them they weren't eating processed food i'm sure they were getting lots of exercise but they were pretty much wiped out by the diseases that the colonists brought they didn't stay up late nobody had invented um yeah nobody had invented like anything besides torches you know, if you want to stay up late, you need to burn something. And they weren't. They were probably getting enough sleep. Same thing with the bubonic plague. Same thing with any of these diseases that happened before processed foods, before people were so fat. I mean, the weak people died. So the people that you had left were the strongest people. And they were getting enough sleep. They were probably had good diets. And they were still dying anyway. So strengthening your immune system didn't seem to help them. Uh, you know, we could say the same thing for coronavirus, but I think one of the things is that a lot of the people who are exposed to coronavirus, they are the descendants of those that survived other coronaviruses. That's what I would suggest. And that's the reason why this virus hasn't hit us and didn't hit let's say, not this virus, but influenza, it might not have killed the Europeans that brought it to the New World because they were the sons and daughters of survivors, people whose genes could fight off the, the infection. The people who didn't or whose bodies could not fight off the infection because they just didn't have the right genes to, to do so they died. So I think that we have to always remember and have, it's hard for me, myself, you know, even to remember and have this humility that life is very fragile. But I think we need to, and we should not get antsy after two months of a lockdown and decide that we're just going to throw caution to the wind because what exactly, Joe? Who are we looking at that's not worried about this virus? Which country is that? Is it Germany? 
Is it Sweden? Because Sweden has its deaths. I really have to look at Germany and see what's going on over there. But they have a better health care system than the U.S. in terms of how much money they spend to get what effect that they do. And even if we look at Canada to say, hey, Canada has a good health care system, people don't have to go bankrupt getting health care, they're not handling it like, you know, huh, it's not a big deal. So, unfortunately, I think the U.S. is going to be a cautionary tale to a lot of other countries that if you disregard what the entire world is doing, having seen Italy and Spain, then you're just going to have to pay the piper. So that might not be something that people want to hear, but you can wish me luck. You can like or unlike, comment, subscribe and or share. Or of course, you can do nothing. Peace.